Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Nashville Stars franchise. We are starting season number four off right, and you already saw the potential with this offense last year. But now it's starting start about time to look at some potential with the pitching staff as well. Ty Macklin makes his debut today here at the MLB level. He has been a guy we have been developing in the system the last three years. Speaking of developing, looking at the top prospects in baseball, Drew Jones got traded from the Twins. He was drafted there and traded uh, for Cabrian Hayes last offseason. Edwin Gallette won the Minor League Player of the Year last year. He is up at the major league level and already doing well. He is the starter in at least the outfield. I don't know about center field. They also still have Kyle Lewis. And we finally have a top 50 prospect in Enrique Bradfield Jr. He sits here at number 12 right now. And I don't think he's quite ready, but I still like his potential quite a bit. Ty Macklin is a very good pitcher, and I think he will be an awesome fit at the MLB level, especially in sim situations, because his walks per nine is actually pretty high to start out at 71. I'm pretty sure that's going to be his biggest strength going into his MLB career. And he faces a pretty tough Boston lineup led by Marcelo Mayer, Alexander Bogarts, and Trevor Story right in the middle of their defense and their offense. Well, I don't know why I said defense. So here we go on the road at Boston, and we will see what happens here in his debut. Ty Macklin is a guy that is kind of a wild card as he faces Marcelo Mayer, and that one will be a single to right field. Dom Thompson Williams can't get a good jump on that one, does stop the ball, but Marcelo Mayer won minor leaguer of the year in season number one. Alexander Bogart's up at the plate hitting 294. This one sh should be two, but it's bobbled by Shea Whitcomb, safe all around. That's going to bring up Trevor Story, who had an MVP-like season last year. Did not win it, but we'll see what he can do in this at bat. He swings and misses at a low splitter. That one will be strike three for Ty Macklin's first major league strikeout now Macklin has never even been moved up in the September call-ups as now he faces the next batter this one will be a blooper to left field it gets down and will score the runner from second and that error comes back to bite us as now it's one nothing Boston Macklin with 22 pitches in this inning make it number 23 strike three looking on the corner as Adalas Garcia gets an RBI in the first inning Nashville also tacks one on by Jesus Aguilar's um, solo home run as Macklin starts to settle down. One strikeout. Then he strikes out the second batter of the inning. And now let's see if he can go for number three, Kyle Higashioka, who is the catcher for the Boston Red Sox. Now low pitch in the dirt, and he strikes out the side in the second inning. You love to see that from Ty Macklin. Macklin is going to be a guy that can really locate pitches. That's going to be his biggest strength of his career, and that's something that we have to build around because Macklin is a guy that is not going to strike out many pitchers. That last inning was kind of an a anomaly. It's not hit the strength of his game, but he can really you know locate pitches. He has great command, and he has pretty good off-speed pitches. But here facing Xander Bogarts, he gives up a double to right field. This one will get all the way to the wall. Dom Thompson-Williams has a good arm in right field. He gets it in quickly. Shea Wickham playing second. Even though he had the air earlier, he has an excellent arm for a middle infielder. Trevor Story 0 for 1 today. Ground ball back up the middle, and Macklin gets out of this inning as well. No damage done, so I am, am very, very impressed through the first few innings. Is now we move on to the fourth inning. Here's a high pop-up in short center field. This one will be camped under by Adames for the second out of this fourth inning. As it brings up Matthew Barefoot, the right fielder now for the Red Sox. This one will be a low splitter. That one will be a walk. 
Main on first base with two outs now. 3-2 pitch. This one's outside. Hit to left field, but it's just a fly ball to KFC Macklin. Shutting him down now after giving up one run in the first and really shouldn't have gave up that run due to the error by Shea Whitcomb. Higashioka at the plate again. He hits one deep to right field. And look at the ground that Dom Thompson Williams covers. He is such an impressive player. I can't wait to see what he turns into. Now, he is kind of a late bloomer. He's 29 years old now, but I still like what he has in front of him. Here's Isaiah Kiner Falafa, who we were thinking about signing in the offseason, decided to ditch that idea, and we went after Willie Adames in the end. That brings up Marcelo Mayer, and they will steal second on this pitch. And now they have a man in scoring position here. Ty Macklin in a little bit of trouble here. So now here we go. Settling down a little bit, but he does walk a runner. So now men on first and second. Xander Bogarts up to the plate. One for two today. A one-two pitch. Outside slider. And it's just going to be a tapper in front of the plate. And it will be an out at first. Runners on second and third now. Let's see if Macklin can come through here and shut down this Boston lineup. Trevor Story 0 for 2 at the plate, and he doesn't get good wood on this one. Maybe he barely missed it, but it's a fly ball to center field. Taylor Trammell playing in center today, and we get through 5. That's going to be the end of the day for Ty Macklin. He does pitch 5. We'll see if we can come through with a win here in his first start. As now we move on to the top of the 8th inning. There's Jorge Alfaro walking to start out the inning. Here is KFC. I want to show his at-bats because he's coming into a crucial year, especially wanting to kind of maybe even possibly get a starting role with this team. That's a fly out to center field. Gary Doss to the plate. Excellent discipline. That one is low in the zone. Bringing up the hottest hitter on our team right now, Willie Adames. With a man in scoring position now, this is the dangerous part of our lineup. Inside, knuckle curve. Ball four. That's going to bring up Rafael Devers, who remember in episode one, we were showing every single player except Devers. He has not yet hit a home run yet. He led our team in homers last year. Let, a, let him in OPS. Also hits. And he was starting the MVP. A one-two pitch over the middle. This one's hit deep. Back to center field. The center fielder runs out of room. A grand slam. Welcome back to Boston. Rafael Devers. He comes through with a big time four run home run, a.k.a. a grand slam. And that gives us a five run cushion at that point. We move on to the ninth inning. Joel Piams comes in and will get. They swing and miss. Devers comes through in the clutch and gets Ty Macklin the first win of his career. And I'm excited for the future of this team. We look exciting so far this year. It's been something that, you know, I have been waiting on. We have been building. This is year four now. We have a bunch of young guys coming up now in the organization. Pair that with Rafael Devers, who we signed in the offseason two years ago. Now, Willie Adames. We haven't signed a bunch of big-name free agents. Devers has been the biggest one. I wouldn't even say Adames was a huge one. And we get the win, and we start off the month of April winning games. We end up winning the next game as well, 6 to nothing, as Boston drops to 1-5 and five on the season. And this was a master class here for our pitching staff. Only giving up four hits, no earned runs, no runs at all. As now we go to Nashville for the first time with the 4-2 and two record here to start this season. We will face the New York Yankees. We look good. We will wear these white uniforms for the first time here in this series as we will face Garrett Cole, and he will be on the mound against James Caprellian. And Cole, through one start, has a 1.65 whip of 4.05 ERA. Caprelli in a 5.79 ERA, a 1.93 whip. Not an impressive start in his first outing. He gave up eight hits in 4.2 innings. We'll see if he can settle down today. 
Joey Wendell will lead off here for the Yankees. Now the lefty will get a hold of a pitch. This one's deep back to the right field wall. It will stay in the park, but will bounce off of the warning track. James Wood gets it in, but it's a leadoff double here for the Yankees. Now last year, the Blue Jays won the division in the AL East. Now I think everybody's playing catch up. We'll see if the Yankees can put on another good season here in season number four. That brings up the next batter, Jonathan India. He strikes out swinging, bringing up Brian Reynolds, who they traded for in season one. This one will be a fly out to right field. And look at Dom Thompson-Williams, a great arm, a good throw to third base will hold up the runner. As that brings up Giancarlo Stanton now. High OPS, but a low average. Caprelli in will get him to swing and miss. At an outside slider and a good start here for the Nashville Stars in the first inning. Willie Adamas will lead off this game versus Garrett Cole. One, two pitch hitting 481. This one's hit well. Will it stay fair? It does a leadoff home run for Willie Adamas. He is on fire to start this season. We are in game number six and he has five home runs. The kid can just hit the ball well. And it's one nothing just like that. Kerry Doss, who is figuring to be the future star of this series. He hits one high to left field. And it looks like he barely missed that one. We already know the power that Kerry Doss has. He already hit the longest home run here at Music City Field, 517 feet a season ago. Rafael Devers to the plate, and he just is off on that swing. But he had good timing, 98 mile an hour up in the zone, two outs. We move up Taylor Trammell to the fourth spot. I want to try him out here. He is off to an excellent start, hitting 348, 1100 OPS, three home runs, eight RBI. I'm going to move him to that fourth spot and bounce Jesus Aguilar down a little bit, and he draws the walk. I love the development, development from Taylor Trammell. He has been quite the impressive player so far. Dom Thompson-Williams to the plate. He goes the opposite field as well. That's a home run. Two opposite field home runs here in the first inning for the Nashville Stars. And Dom Thompson-Williams absolutely crushes that pitch. How about these guys that we are just finding? These aren't big name stars. Taylor Trammell, Dom Thompson-Williams, Willie Adames. These aren't household names. These are good players, but we are finding a way to win with them. It's 3-0 here. We move on to the third inning. Here is Caprellian giving, off a, giving up a single here with two outs. Orlando Arcia at the plate. This one's knocked down by Adames. Both former Brewers, Willie Adames and Orlando Arcia, they award Arcia with the base hit. Tom Murphy to the plate now. He hits one well to left field. This one gets all the way to the wall. This one will be thrown to the cutoff man by Taylor Trammell. Willie Adames, a long throw home, and that is the 99 arm. Adames getting it done at the plate and in the field. This is why you go ahead and sign guys like this. Excellent defensive player, 99 arm strength. He nails the runner at the plate. Joey Wendell up here in the third inning as well for his second at bat. He already has one double, make it two in this game. And he is really hitting the ball well, seeing the ball well. He has Caprellian's number, his third double of the year. That one's opposite field also. Is now they have a runner on second base, Jonathan India to the plate, and he hits one well to left field. This one's carrying and it keeps going. A home run here for Jonathan India in this game is tied up at three. And that just caught way too much of the play. The thing with Caprellian is that he is a good pitcher. Sometimes he just misses his spots, and when he misses, he misses badly. Josh Bell back up, up at the plate, and he will just ground out to first base. But not before the New York Yankees tie this ball game up. Willie Adame is up for his second at bat. This one will be an outside fastball. He cannot hold up on that pitch. Garrett Cole gets a strikeout on him, bringing up Kerry Doss to the plate. Kerry Doss hits one well to center field. So much power with that bat. 
That one will get all the way to the wall. It's a double. The one thing I love about the top of this lineup, it's going to be tough to get all three guys out, especially our top four hitters, especially with how Tramel is hitting the ball now. And Gary Dosh just gets a hold of that one to dead center. Rafael Devers to the play 0 for 1 today, and he swings early at this one, and he hits it a mile in the air into our bullpen. And it will bring up two outs. We do force the throw to third base that time, bringing up Taylor Trammell, who walked early in his first at-bat, hitting 348 on the year. And he gets a hanger. Taylor Trammell with an excellent start to this season. Number four on the year through the first six games, 427 off of Garrett Cole. And that one was absolutely demolished. That one is not coming back anytime soon. Taylor Trammell with an excellent start. It has been quite the surprise. We sh Should we really be surprised based off of how he hit to end the year last year? I mean, the kid is just raking right now. And Dom Thompson-Williams comes up and he strikes out, but a 5-3 to three ball game. That brings up the veteran here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Jesus Aguilar. He gets a great pitch to hit, but this one's just a high pop-up to left field. Garrett Cole is leaving us a lot of good pitches to hit here in the first few innings of this game, bringing up Kurt Zimbrano, who hits one hard up the middle, and that one will be a base hit. I love what we're seeing from our hitters in the first few games of the season. James Wood comes to the plate, who is absolutely struggling. He hits a slow ground ball. That one is going to be offline. They try to turn two, and the throw by Josh Bell to short will be off. That brings up John Dumont to the plate now. 0 for 1 today in that ninth spot with one out. We will actually lay down a bunt here and move the runners over. Now, why is that a smart decision for the small ball? Because we bring up maybe the hottest hitter in baseball right now in Willie Adames, who's hitting in that leadoff spot. And this is what I imagine for this lineup. Rolling it over, guys in, run, run, guys in scoring position. And here he goes, one for two. Already an opposite field home run today. He is feeling his bat so far. The 79th pitch of the game will be destroyed. That's a home run right down the middle. What was Garrett Cole thinking? The sixth home run through six games for Willie Adamas. Just absolutely tattooed to right center. That one isn't coming back. 103 velo, 30 degree launch angle. That was crushed. Garrett Cole will see the bench now as they bring in Clark Schmidt now in the fifth inning. That one will bring up Taylor Trammell, who is already one for one today. Make it two for two. The kid is absolutely hitting the ball well. And it is now an eight to three ball game. Now runners on first and second, no outs. Taylor Trammell is just hitting. I mean, just absolutely thriving this year, bringing up Dom Thompson-Williams, who already went deep today. He's a little late on that all-speed pitch. It will just be a fly ball to left field. But re really, one through nine, our lineup is just hitting so solid right now. Jesus Aguilar, 0 for 2 today. He's a little ahead of this one, and he's not beating this double play out. No way. We squander an opportunity right there, but we still have the five-run lead. As now we move on to the bottom of the seventh inning. New York tacks on a couple more runs. Now a 8-5 to five game. Willie Adam is back at the plate looking for home run number three in this game. As that brings up Kerry Doss now. OPS at 950. He is seeing the ball well so far to start this year. Facing Clark Schmidt with his 38th pitch. Will be low. A hard hit ball to the right side. That one gets through the infield. And now we have runners on first and second. The meat of our order up. This is how dangerous our lineup is. Nobody is safe to pitch to. Devers to the plate next. Outside fastball, and he is just ahead. But it does have some distance on it. Deep enough to tag Willie Adam as he gets to third. So now runners on first and third, and that will bring up Taylor Trammell. Two for two today. He has turned into one of our most dangerous hitters. 
Now a uh, hanger over the middle of the plate. This one's driven deep to right field. Will it carry out for his second home run? It's caught at the track, but it will be deep enough for a sacrifice fly. It is a 9-5 to five ball game here in the seventh inning. And Taylor Trammell gives us another run of insurance. Moving on to the ninth inning, Pablo Moya here. This isn't a close. This isn't a save opportunity, but with a four-run cushion, he gets the ground ball to first base, and that one will do it to end this game. An excellent outing by our team today. They actually get 16 hits. I don't know how they did. It didn't even seem like that, but all their, their hits were kind of in spurts, and they could not capitalize, and we end up with another victory to start, start this season. We are 5-2 and two now. After this victory, Willie Adamas goes deep. Taylor Trammell goes deep. It's kind of a trend. If, the, if one of them doesn't go deep in a game, it's kind of a mystery. We end up winning the next game 4-1-1 to one and one to see how long our win streak goes to end this season. And we end up dropping the last game of that three-game set versus the Yankees. But we start out the season with an excellent 6-3 and three record. And look at how we're hitting. Willie Adamas, 486 average, OPS over 1,000. Buda Bless coming off the bench. His OPS is over 1,000. Taylor Trammell absolutely killing the ball right now. His OPS is over 1,000. Kerry Doss hitting 306. His OPS is over 1,000. Three of those four guys have four home runs to their name at least. Devers, who was an AL MVP candidate last year, isn't even being talked about right now because of the performances by Kerry Dosh, Trammell, and Willie Adames. The rest of our guys are doing okay. You look at KFC hitting 154, John Duma hitting below 100. That is alarming. Shea Wickham hitting 200. But then look at James Wood. Absolutely struggling right now. 0 for 20. We might have to move James Wood down to get him some work in AAA. Because right now, it is just not working out. He is struggling. And just look at who is behind him. Enrique Bradfield Jr. is coming up in the organization. He's not quite ready yet. But if there's one guy to compete with James Wood for the future of center field, it's Enrique Bradfield Jr. We also have some other options like Colin Ozuna, who can obviously play there. Or Taylor Chamel can be the full-time center fielder. Who knows? But I like what we have in our organization. We also have a bat in Jacob McCarthy. He's hitting 435 to start this year as well. So that's going to do it here in this episode. Next episode, we will get through a ton of games. Now, I want to highlight this next game, though, versus 5-5 five and five Texas. Remember, we traded Matthew Thompson in the Jack Leiter trade. Matthew Thompson was our minor league pitcher of the year in season number two. Then we traded him away and hopefully acquired a star in Jack Ladder. We'll have to compare careers to start our next episode to see who's really doing better right now. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tino. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside, it's a war going on.